Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Croc 2. Welcome to the Sailor Tribe Secret Mine. And a wizard who is defective. There we go. Learn some spells. This is the level that unlocks when you collect all five of the golden gobos from each of the levels. And what awaits us is a puzzle piece. Some habits just don't die young, so... We're looking for puzzle pieces again in this game, in terms of getting all the extra stuff. So where could it be? Well, we're going to have to find the key first. And that's going to be further into the mine. So let's head on our way. I rather like this secret level because it's kind of relaxing. Especially in the minecart segments. You actually do not have to do anything in order to collect these crystals. All you have to do is just kind of sit back, coast... Look at all the scenery around you, and it's really good, to be honest. Alright, now let's get our bearings here. For the next couple levels, that we don't actually need any items from Swap Meet Pete, so that's kind of good if you're looking for getting some crystals and actually stockpiling. But, we have some crystals all the way up there rather high to get to, and the only way we're actually able to get up there is by triple jumping off of this one box. It gives you just enough height in order to grab the ledge and then be able to get up here. Don't worry if you're not able to get up here because, well, crystals of course are not a necessity unless you're looking for more currency in order to just kind of throw around. But they're up there if you need them, or if you're looking to collect all 100 like me. And we're also getting stacked crates. If you remember from the last game, if you just hold down the stomp button, you're able to go through all of the crates in a row in order to get all of them and just kind of get to the ground faster. Now for this video, we're going to be going through pretty much the rest of the levels of this world, and they're... Aside from this level, the rest of them are going to be rather story-heavy, so I think it's time we actually talked about the story more, a little bit more in detail, or at least as much as we actually know and are given information about, because this game, I kind of feel that it doesn't handle the story very well. The first game's story was simple, easy to follow, but this one kind of goes a little bit more complicated, so I kind of find that there's a little bit of trouble following along. So let's just try to remember so far as we're going through this level, the previous cutscenes that we've seen pretty much just like when we started the game. We have a professor who is working apparently on an airplane who came across an evil cult ritual that resulted in the resurrection of Baron Dante. This game has a interesting way of going from cutesy characters and graphics to really dark and kind of sad kind of imagery. It's a really stark contrast and it's weird. But yeah, and then apparently he was taken away, but it was not in a good camera angle, so we don't know exactly what's going on there. On top of that, Croc, before he came all the way to the different villages, received a message in a bottle, or found a message in a bottle on the beach that he was in. And that message was his paw prints, or at least a print, that was very similar to him. So whoever, and it's supposedly a message from someone who is looking for Croc, his parents. And the only reason why we know it's actually his parents is because of um, the back of the box, back of the CD case, and also within the manual. That's pretty much all we know about the story right now. And there we go, all hundred crystals, so we get full life, and we have the key, so we can get the puzzle piece. And that's pretty much it for the story, which is, well, a little to go along. Well, the problem I mainly have with the story is 
that there's not a lot of information and not a lot of creative use about telling the story like there was in the last game. I remember doing the, pretty much just narrating the story as per the manual in the last game, and, well, the story in the manual with this game is not really all that interesting and is very minimalist. They got a different writer in order to write the manual compared to the last one because, well, it... The style of writing for that level, or the style of writing for that manual didn't really reflect the game, so I don't know what they did. But if you're wanting to read the story as per what is in the manual, I'll put that all in the description. But now it is time to see what this buddy is up to. If you remember from when we were here before, this door was blocked off. Now it's open to us. It opens up after we complete three levels and get three golden gobos. Why don't you just give it to her? None of you seem to be drinking it. Pray for me, pray. I am your god. But let's see what's going on. Time to take on the first boss. Sylvina the Squid. I even like the remix of the new tracks. It's really nice. Now, like in every other level, there is a hundred crystals. But, other than defeating the boss, there's really nothing else to deal with, and there's a crate up there. I'm gonna see about dealing with that. Bosses in Croc 2 compared to Croc 1, um... I'll just say that they're really similar, to be honest. And that they're kind of simplistic to deal with. And the levels leading up to them are pretty standard. Alright, that was way too far away, but I think a triple jump should do it for me. Alright. The one thing that's different about the level leading up to a boss is that, in terms of collecting crystals, you're not getting all 100. We're only up to 42. And other than collecting what's in this crate and what I left behind on the hanging grates, it looks like we're only going to get up to 50. So the question remains, where are the other 50 coming from? I hope he's competent with that TNT. But hello, Savina! Giant squid right on the border of the Sailor Village. We have to do something about her so she doesn't get, well, the, I guess the global supply of inventory. And the way to do that is just to blow her up. The only way to damage this boss in particular is by carrying a TNT crate like this. Get all the way up to the front gate, press square, and you'll hit her for a bit of damage. Repeat the process, and then you'll be good to go. Savina isn't really all that difficult in order to take down. Her only threat is when you're on the beach and she's pretty much just throwing random stuff at you. The real threat is pretty much going to be yourself here, because if you're not familiar with the platforming at this point, then you're most likely going to be having some issues just trying to get to Savina at all. Because when you get to the platform challenge here, she does not throw anything else at you. Why? I don't know. It makes this boss fight more easy than it honestly should be. But then again, croc bosses necessarily were not that hard to begin with. Her track is nice, though. I always have to say that. If you're hurting for hearts, like, there's oh, there's only going to be one heart there, actually. But now that we're at her last pill, you can see that we don't have a lot of options in terms of platforming. 
she singed a bunch of the barrels, and if we jump onto those, we get hurt, lose our TNT crate, and then we have to go back and we also lose a heart. But it's really not that hard in order to get the last one on her. The last 50 crystals come out of her, and we're good to go. And with that last cutscene, we immediately go into the second boss. Bosses in terms of this game, well, they can be rather back-to-back -back about it. Compared to just doing three levels and then doing another boss, which you kind of can do because it is unlocked, but I prefer doing them back-to-back -back like this. I love these skeleton dantinis, they are so adorable. And for some reason, Baron Dante collected a pretty much the box art of the first game in order to use as his own personal dartboard. He also looks a little bit tired, to be honest. And that's what you get for coming back from the dead. This lead-up to Canon both Keith, though, um, other than the skeleton dantinis, it leads something to be desired, because it is just a linear hallway. It's not like it's bad or anything. But, there's kind of just nothing to it. But then again, the lead up to the bosses never were anything special. But we made it to the end! You get kidnapped. All right, so with a rather kind of sad violin going on, we have to wreak havoc against Cannonball Keith's ship, which has a wonderful head on it, or I guess head ornament. Now, while this is happening, he's also going to be shooting cannonballs at these platforms, which means that you do relatively have to be quick about taking him down. Otherwise, the platforming is going to be a little bit harder for you. All you have to do is just get him three times, and there's the left center and right cannons. Just fire them all off once, and you're good to go. No. You have to drop on me, literally. Other than that, Cannonball Keith is, well, a pirate. And his last resort when you're gonna hit him for one last time is just to rapid fire. Unfortunately, I left the last platform challenge a little bit the hardest for last, but it's fine. Hey dude. Can't hit me now, can you? Because you have terrible accuracy. And the gobo's gone. Okay, he saved himself. But that isn't gonna help the professor, he's still with Baron Dante, so let's actually get going. Bye! You never mentioned that you were being... that he was a problem... you... you... 
You, you sailor man. Eh. Anyway, if you're ever wanting to do P Cannon Both Keith again, all you have to do is just go back into this hole and you can fight him again. He's pretty much an easy 100 crystals in order to get more because, well, in the last three levels we got another 300 crystals in order to spend elsewhere. And we're going to be needing them for the next world. Otherwise, we're completely done with the Sailor Village. We've collected all five golden gobos, collected the puzzle piece, and everything's fine. Still burp. I do think some of the dialogue is kind of cute. Whether it's in this actual dialogue or the delivery, it's good. Hope you catch something on your stick, buddy. But, that Gobo did mention to go and meet Swap Beat Pete for something, so we might as well go ahead and do that. He doesn't seem to be grateful, he just keeps fishing. And without even asking us, he immediately sends us to the next world. And in terms of the story, this is the first time that we're actually mentioned that, hey, I'm looking for my parents. But next time, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this for a little bit. And next time we're going to be exploring the world of the Cossack Gobos. Who don't look very Cossack to me. Cossack the Aggression. Because they're wearing Viking hats. But it's also the Ice World. So we're going to take a look around and do the special level of the five next time. See you next time, everyone.